Your period is making you weak, at least for part of the month. Now, before you raise an eyebrow, yes, I'm a cis man. I, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> But I'm also a personal trainer and I work with mostly women, so I've always needed to understand how your period and your hormones affect your training. If you've ever felt like a powerhouse one week and then struggled the next, watch this video and save it because we're going to go into detail and this is important stuff. Before I start, just consider this general information. Every woman's cycle is unique and what works for one person might not work for another. And if you have severe symptoms or major irregularities in your cycle, or if it's absent entirely, please make sure to go see a healthcare professional. The first two weeks are called your follicular phase and days one through five are your menstrual phase, also just called your period. During menstruation, three of your hormones, progesterone, testosterone, and estrogen are at their most stable. And while it might be tempting to skip the gym, especially if you get really bad cramps or your energy is low, this phase can actually be a really good time for strength training. If you feel up to it, and I know that's a big if for some of you, don't shy away from the weights. Days six through eight, right in the middle of your follicular phase is when your estrogen starts to rise. If you had cramps, they're probably starting to lessen. You might feel more energetic. So take this as a cue to raise your intensity and push yourself a little bit more. You're not at peak strength yet, but you should be able to raise your weights. In days nine through 13, your late follicular stage, your estrogen is at its highest. Everyone is different. Some of you might experience some bloating and discomfort. So non weight bearing exercises or low impact cardio like walking, swimming, cycling during this phase might be what feels best for you. However, many of you will be able to continue your regular strength training or even feel stronger during this time. Pay attention to how your body feels and just adjust the intensity or the type of training accordingly. Ovulation happens around day 14. Might be one day, might be a few, but this is when you might just hit a new PR in the gym. Your testosterone is at its highest, so focusing on high weight, low rep work can really pay off. But, and it's a big but, remember that surge in estrogen? Well, it makes your tendons and your ligaments a little more susceptible to injury. It doesn't mean you can't go hard, just means you need to warm up, maintain good form, and ensure you aren't overstretching. Now we move into your luteal phase, the last two weeks of your cycle. In days 15 to 20, your body starts gearing up for a potential pregnancy. That means a rise in progesterone and an increase in body temperature, which can make workouts feel a lot tougher. It's like trying to run a marathon in the heat of summer. You might not hit those personal bests, but that's okay. You might also feel more bloated because your body is holding onto more water, which will make the number on the scale go up. Don't worry about it. Better yet, stop weighing yourself at all. It's just making you feel bad about yourself. Anyway, during this time, it's smart to put an emphasis on anaerobic or power-based activities, things that use sudden bursts of energy. If Olympic lifting or sprints are your thing, now's the time to shine. In your mid-luteal phase, days 21 to 24, your body will be breaking down more protein. So if muscle gain is your goal, might be a good time to amp up your protein intake. Very much like the late follicular phase, you'll probably feel more bloated and heavy. So if you need to, turn down the intensity of your workouts. It's a great time to recharge before your next cycle. The last part of this cycle is your late luteal phase. You might have some PMS symptoms here, but the intensity often varies for everyone. Could be a good time to deload and focus more on recovery or low intensity activities before you ramp up for the building phase again as your cycle starts anew. But one thing you shouldn't do is measure your entire month's progress by the luteal phase alone. And that's it. Stop fighting your period. Let it work for you by knowing how to use it to your advantage.